we doing this morning, huh? Got some fresh water for you. Allow me to hook you up with some feed. So all the chickens and all the geese have been living inside the hoop house now for the last three days. And so far, I gotta admit, it's working out pretty great. The chickens are using their roosts. They're also starting to learn to use their nesting boxes, which, ooh, yeah, look, we got some eggs here this morning. Ooh, this one still feels warm. And while the geese are kind of keeping to themselves, overall, there's pretty much good flock harmony inside the goose house. Because I'm training the chickens to the hoop house, I'm keeping their water inside and it gets messy. Ideally, this would not have that space. Now, as most of you know, we hatched out a bunch of chickens last year. Those chickens came from roosters that we had on our farm. And so to prevent inbreeding, I had to send my two roosters, General Washington and Alexander Hamilton, on their way. Send me on my way. Send me on my way. And so presently, our farm lacks a rooster. Well, actually, we have one rooster. We have Penny right here, who's our primary rooster. And then we actually have this other son of Penny right here, this guy in the back, who is also a rooster. But those are some tiny lightweight chickens. And I want to have my birds be dual purpose, where I'm raising them for eggs with the ladies and turning the fellows into meat birds. And so that's going to mean I need some fresh blood on the farm and some fresh roosters. I'm going to have to go on a field trip because I actually have my sights set on a rooster. One of my coworkers from my day job, she has some backyard chickens in her flock and she currently has too many roosters at her place. And so she's got this Rhode Island red rooster, which is absolutely one of the breeds that I want. All right, Kurt, dig in. You can have the shake. Audrey, you can fight Kurt for the shake. You know, I don't know if a lot of you guys know this, but she's named Audrey One after Audrey uh, from Little Shop of Horrors. Not Audrey Two, the plant, but Audrey One, the lady who seemed like a kind of nice person. Oh, and by the way, speaking of Audrey One and Two, uh, I got this cool t-shirt that I want to show you guys. So my friends Alex Steed and Sarah Marshall over at the You Are Good podcast. It's one of my favorite podcasts where they just sort of deconstruct various movies through the lens of feelings and emotions. They sent me this awesome plant zaddy shirt which, uh, you know, features Seymour and Audrey, uh, Audrey 2 on it. I was so stoked when I got it the other day, I felt like I had to show it off, but it's that time of year where it's tough to show off t-shirts, so there you go. <laughs> so in order to acquire this rooster, I'm gonna have to need to leave the farm. Oh, Ginny, don't be sad that I have to leave the farm. And by the way, you guys, she's wearing her camera. I wonder what she's been up to. I absolutely love watching Ginny's adventures around the farm, and I think a lot of you guys do too. Our top performing TikTok star of 2021 was Ginny Barncat. She had a breakout year. In just the same year, she was born and her videos surpassed more than 30 million views, so good on her. And she was even recently featured in the Boston Globe. I'm worried that I'm ultimately gonna have to deal with a contract renegotiation with her. All right, cows, you got fresh hay, you got a little bit of pixie dust, and I'm gonna have to leave the farm. So yes, I now have to leave the farm and head to my friend Melody's house to go get the rooster. You know, General Washington, one of our last roosters, he was actually a, a Rhode Island Red as well. And so, you know, having those Rhode Island Red genetics actually seems like it makes a lot of sense for our flock. They're good, cold, hardy birds. They're pretty large, so as far as being meat birds go, they, they do fairly well. You know, they don't convert feed into meat as efficiently as like a Cornish cross or even like one of those Freedom Ranger breeds, but they do okay. I, I found that when I did my rooster experiment last year, 
that the meat production was decent and I also feel like the ethics of it are important. If I'm going to hatch out my own chickens, I feel like I need to take responsibility for those roosters and find a good use for them. As I think about my plans for 2022 and what I'm going to do with my chickens, I do want to expand out my flock and continue adding more for egg laying, both for us as well as friends and families and neighbors. And then the reality of it all is when I look at having the cattle, having a good population of chickens to follow the cattle and eat the fly larva that starts to form in their poop and helping me control the flies on the farm with the cattle. It's all part of like the same process. And that's why having chickens are important to our farm. They're not a big revenue generator. I think I made like, I don't know, 75 bucks in chicken eggs last year. It was not uh, about the money at all. It really is number one about providing us with food for our personal dinner table in the form of both meat as well as eggs. And then also taking care of the health of our land and our other animals. You know, if you think like about our Goldshaw Farm logo, right? It's the image of a bird perched on top of a bear. And that's the way it's been ever since I came up with the name and designed the logo back in uh, 2016. The idea of having two animals living symbiotically is, is a core value of our farm. It's actually based on you know some of the things I've seen over the years when you look at animals like rhinoceroses and the cowbirds right and that they have these birds that perch upon them and pick off the ticks and other insects and, and help you know keep the rhinoceros healthy while at the same time the rhinoceros is providing the bird with a meal and that's not that different than the relationship between our cattle and our chickens funny side note there's also a metaphor for the bird and the bear with my wife and me where each of us represents a different of those animals i'll let you guys guess which is which you know hatching our own birds won't be the only chickens that we add to the farm this year back in december i was doing a live stream on facebook and i had my friend tom from the murray mcmurray hatchery on and we had a really good conversation just shooting the breeze about you know different types of birds and raising birds and, and kind of some of the experiences that Tom's had, some of the experiences that we've had. It was, it was a lot of fun. But one of the things I did while we were doing the live stream was I actually put in an order for another batch of egg laying chickens. You know, I really like having a diversity of birds and because we're not really focused on production egg laying and we're much more about just sort of having a fun flock that pairs well with our chickens. The order is kind of diverse. I think there's some Americanas, there's some Golden Stars, there's even a Buttercup chicken. And so those birds are gonna come in the summer. And so I'm excited to see them. I'll probably try to hatch out my own batch of birds too at the same time um, as part of our chicken plans for 2022. So our chickens have been living with the geese now for a couple of days. I'll probably give them a couple more days to train them to the hoop house. I do have to figure out a place where I'm gonna put this new rooster because one of the things that's gonna be important is that I usually like to take at least a week to quarantine a new bird. It cuts down the risk of infectious diseases being spread. Not that I'm saying that my friend has infectious diseases with her flocks, but just kind of a good safety precaution to take. And so I think what I'm gonna to have to do is come up with a creative space to keep this rooster. I can't keep him in the same hoop house with all my other chickens and geese, at least initially. But then after that initial period of time, I'll introduce them to the rest of the flock. I think we are almost here, so we will pick up the rooster. I did realize I forgot my fishing net, which usually when I go to pick up new birds or go to somebody's house, I'm usually bringing that fishing net because it makes it easier, but uh, I don't know, we'll see how we do here. Use the cat carrier. Okay, Buck, in you go, buddy. So I have him in this smaller container because it keeps him from thrashing around and hurting himself. That's a hard lesson I've learned over the years. Well, that went surprisingly well and it was pretty gosh darn easy. Even without the chicken net, I was able to grab him. He is a big boy. Like, I don't know if you can tell, obviously, in that container, but he is a big, big rooster, which is exactly what I was hoping for. I hope he's going to be okay with me. Sometimes roosters can be a little bit uh, rough and aggressive when they get put into a new home, and so I'm going to be trying to work with him as I get him back to the farm and get him cool with me so that when I introduce him with the rest of the flock, I don't have any issues there. You know, I've seen and heard a lot of horror stories from folks over the years about, you know, psychotic and crazy roosters and aggressive roosters. And admittedly, I actually haven't had much of a problem. Lucky the rooster, who was really the first rooster that we had around the farm a couple years back, he was pretty aggressive. He was an Americana uh, rooster and a really beautiful bird, but unfortunately, 
would like attack me, would attack the girls. He's kind of a problem. And so I'm really hoping that this rooster here will be a much better farm and barnyard companion. Now, some of you might be wondering why I'm keeping him in the tiny cat carrier versus a larger case. And what I've found is that over the years, I've tried to move birds and I've kept them in spaces that are actually too large for them. And they end up hurting themselves by banging up against the crate and that sort of thing. And so what I'm finding is that like the cat carrier is the perfect container for a single chicken. You know, even having him crated up like that just a little bit helps keep him calmer and from thrashing around. I mean, here I am driving around, bumping around in the truck and I haven't heard but a squawk from him. So, so far so good. But I am certain that he is itching to get back to the farm. Okay, buddy boy. We're home. Let's get you inside. All right, pal. You don't have much longer in this thing. Let's go. Into the barn you go. Hey, Molly Murder Mittens. Molly, are you curious about our new visitor on the farm? How's it going, sweetie? I bet Ginny's gonna get curious here in a minute. Ginny, are you curious about what's in that box? Well, I'll introduce you to him. You're gonna need to treat him with some respect. He's all turned around. Out you go, buddy. Okay, everybody, allow me to introduce to you Buck, Buck the Rooster. What's up there, buddy? How are you doing? Oh, easy, Chief, easy. Take it easy. Settle down. He is a little bit worked up. <laughs> and Ginny's like, oh man, he crapped all over my cat carrier. <laughs> you want to say hi to the new rooster? Hi, Buck. Hi, sweetheart. He's a little... He's scared. He's a little scared from the transit. We're going to give him some time to settle That's and acclimate here. That's a very small cat carrier. No, see, the small cat carrier is actually important because it actually keeps him from flapping around and going crazy. He probably break a wing. Yeah. But he's a beautiful boy. Yeah, he's a very pretty he bird. Like he wants nothing to do with this, though. Yeah, he's not happy. He's like, I've been taken from a strange place into a new strange place. How am I figuring this out? You gonna let him chill in here? Yeah, I'm gonna let him stay in here for, I don't know, probably about a week. Just to like let him acclimate and get used to the space. Mm -hmm. And then once he acclimates to the space, we'll start to introduce him to the rest of the flock. Just also wanna make sure he doesn't have like a respiratory infection or something that he can pass to the other birds. Yeah, I'm talking about you, buddy. You talking to me? It's okay, man. How's it going there, Uncle Buck? Don't worry, Buck, you wait there. I'm gonna get you some food and water, okay, buddy? Okay, Buck, I come bearing some gifts for you. Here's some water. Look, a whole dish of water. If you're thirsty. And Buck, here's some food for you, buddy. So you got food and water now, pal. I'm gonna leave you here to be acclimated. I'll be back in a little bit to check on you. Who are you? I'm your Uncle Buck. All right, let's check on Uncle Buck. How are you settling in there, buddy? You like that perch? Oh, okay, okay, okay. I won't try to pet you. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna have to hang out here for, you know, about a week. Like I said, I just wanna make sure he's not carrying anything before starting the process of introducing him to the flock. I'm Anita Horgoth. Buck Melanoma. Molly Russell's wart. You know, one thing I'm actually noticing about him is he's got a very interesting comb. Like, if you look at it, right, it's like a lot flatter than your normal rooster comb. I actually think it's probably good for our climate. It probably keeps him less susceptible to frostbite. I don't know, maybe he got attacked when he was younger or something, but kind of a weird flat top. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this update from the farm. I will be back soon with an update on all the chickens, including Uncle Buck and seeing how he fares. Until then, I think you really should check out this video right over here. You'll like it a lot, I think, or at least YouTube thinks so.